Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome each of you to the commencement exercises of the 119th graduating class of Coldwater High School. Would you please rise and join in the singing of our national anthem and remain standing for the invocation, which will be offered by Reverend Kenneth Sherpick, St. Mark's Episcopal Church. Eternal God, we invoke your spirit upon this occasion, for which many have endured much to come to where we are today. Student and teacher, administrator and benefactor, parent and friend, we offer thanksgiving for goals accomplished, for requirements met, for ambitions realized, for dreams fulfilled. We offer thanksgiving that some have excelled, many have persevered, and most have survived. Forbid us to revel in this moment for a while. Then give us the courage to look beyond the rights, honors, and privileges conferred here today to the responsibilities, obligations, decisions, frustrations, pain, and tears which lie ahead. Make us lifelong students of the truth wherever it may be found. Give us courage to maintain integrity and to fight against that which devalues and destroys human life. Give us your spirit of love, peace, and compassion that life may be nurtured and valued and affirmed through Jesus Christ our Lord. You may be seated. Welcome, fellow graduates faculty, friends, and relatives, and parents. You've probably heard many times that one thing or another is the key to success. Well, I'd like to present the idea that teamwork is truly the key to success. Take a look at the Chrysler Corporation. Before Liacocca came to Chrysler, the company was failing. Every employee was doing his job, but the employees we're not working together. The teamwork was not there. We, the graduates, are part of a team. Our team includes our community, parents, friends, and educators. As, as students, we have looked to the other members of our team for knowledge, time, encouragement, and patience. Each member of this team 
has done his part to help us reach our goal today, graduation. We as a class are also a separate team. We must remember that each person has, is just as important as another, from Adams to Zabonik. An example of the successfulness of this idea is the Japanese automobile companies. The Japanese treat every employee as a significant member, from janitor to president. Our class team has added new members and lost members by people moving in and out of the CHS district. But we have also lost two members through death. At this time, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence for Terry Henry and Robert Burleson. Thank you. This teamwork involves a delicate balance. Our basketball team showed a balance of abilities. They worked hard together towards a common goal and brought success to this complete team. A parallel may be made between the designing of a car and the creating of a successful life. To quote Lee Iacocca, take air conditioning for example. If you're paying an extra $700 to keep cool in the summer, you want your money's worth. Whoever designs the air conditioning system has to remember, it's no good if it takes 30 minutes to cool down the car, because most trips are over by then. So you need to install high-speed blowers, but they can't be too noisy, because the guy driving the car wants to listen to his $300 stereo while the air conditioning is on. The air conditioning guy can't say, that's not my problem, I just want to cool him down. He's got to integrate his part into the total system of the car, just as each member of the team must integrate his part into the road to success. Now I'd like to discuss my support team at home. I'd just like to wish a happy 58th birthday to my father. Happy birthday, Dad. to the graduates. Thank your support teams. Without them, you wouldn't be here today. I wish all of you the best of luck with your future plans. Remember to always do your best as a member of whatever team you choose on your road to success. May God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Ohio. But about halfway through that year, my family moved here to Coldwater. Now that was a very fortunate step for me. Not only did I move away from Cleveland, but I, made, I moved away from a school that literally terrified me. I moved away from a threatening and domineering teacher who I so fondly referred to as Mrs. Soggy Tomato. And I moved away from a teacher who tried to convince my parents that I had a learning disability, it would be very difficult for me to learn. I moved away from a very unfortunate and destructive situation. But more importantly, I moved to Coldwater, to a very positive learning place. And thanks to my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Wilcox, my attitude changed very quickly. Only then could I start doing something productive. And only then did I start learning about what a fantastic thing the mind really is. Each person comes to this earth unarmed. His brain is his only tool. Nothing is given to man on earth, and everything he needs has to be produced. Man cannot survive except through his mind. 
And to maintain life, he must plant food or he must hunt it. But in order to plant, a process of thought is necessary. And in order to hunt, he needs weapons. And to make these weapons, a process of thought is required. Now from man's simplest necessity to the highest religious abstraction, everything we have and everything we are comes from a single attribute of man, the function of his reasoning mind. Everything we see around us is a product of someone's thinking. The simple invention of the wheel, the high school standing over there, and the skyscrapers we see in the big cities are all products of the reasoning mind. Now this reasoning mind is an attribute of each individual. There are no collective thoughts or brains. Sure, compromises, divisions, sharing exists, but these are only secondary. The primary act, reasoning, is performed by each man alone. You can't think for another person just as you cannot breathe for another person. All functions of the body and spirit are private and cannot be shared or transferred. Men do, however, learn from one another but it's only by exchanging material. You can't give someone the capacity to think, yet it's our only means of survival. Now each person has a couple of alternatives. He can rely on the independent work of his own mind or can function as a parasite fed by the minds of others. Now each person chooses to use his mind or not to use it. Now the reason we have schools is so that people can develop their minds, so that valuable knowledge can be exchanged and produced. But in order to produce a successful, productive school, two things must be present. First of all, you need competent, intelligent teachers willing to exchange their knowledge. And secondly, you need students who have chosen to use and develop their minds. Now, I firmly believe that Coldwater has some of both of these. We do have a valuable school system. I'm talking about teachers and students. The elementary, middle, and high schools do produce competent, intelligent people who have chosen to survive through the use of their own minds. Now here at CHS, we have some very exceptional and special people who are teachers. Now by special, I mean intelligent people who have chosen to share their knowledge and are successful at it. I mean people who exchange something of value. I mean competent teachers who do their jobs well. First of all, we have Mr. Bob Mullally, who teaches the best English class I've ever had. We have Mr. Ivy, the chemistry teacher here, who not only competently teaches in his classroom, but spent his time after school last year tutoring certain students for an advanced placement exam. We have Mrs. Hart and Mr. Martinson, both math teachers, who laid a firm foundation for students to move on to Mr. Swan in physics and calculus. He also, like Mr. Ivy, not only competently teaches, but uses his time after school and his own hours to tutor students so they can go on and do well in AP exams. Finally, we have Mrs. Olson, the German teacher, who offered to give her planning period to teach free of charge because she didn't feel that ha having level three and four German students together was benefiting them as much as she would have liked to. Now let me tell you, when you come out of one of these classes, you know your material if you chose to take advantage of the incredible opportunity you were offered. These people are valuable. And let me also say that the grades you receive from these people and the knowledge you gain means something. They don't hand out grades according to some reputation or what they think you should get. What they give you is an accurate reflection of what you've produced. I'm not talking about handing out awards to a group of students for SRA scores and ignoring the fact that within this group of students we have national merit scholars. This degrades the concept of value. These aforementioned teachers do not commit acts such as this they uphold extremely high standards. Now for the last week, we've been having awards nights, senior convocation, etc. Students have been honored and recognized for their academic achievement. Now I think that's great, except for the 12 years I've been here, I've never seen any kind of banquet honoring competent teachers. And I'm not referring to any kind of popularity contest. I'm talking about honoring valuable teachers. To all competent teachers I've ever had in my 12 years in Coldwater, I would like to say I commend you and I thank you for giving me and many other students here the opportunity to use our minds. Now in closing, I would like to share with the class of 1986 a poem that was written and given to me by my father for graduation. I think it's very applicable to graduating seniors. 
while you journey without embrace, out of bonds of others' care, away from warm and deadly safety, you need a bridge to travel there. While you go beyond the given, out of paths that others share, away from touch and then responding, you need a bridge to travel there. While you fly above the waiting, out of sight of grin and bear, away from what they say is being, you need a bridge to travel there. Save your life and own your actions. Use your mind, don't others share. Reach and grasp your life by choosing. Let your own mind lift you there. Good luck, class of 1986. Thank you. <laughs> and graduating class of 1986. In today's world of high achievement, lofty goals, and dreams of success, something very unfortunate has occurred in many adults. They have become obsessed with the secular pleasures of life. Their minds have focused on a single aim, and they restricted th themselves exclusively to satisfying their aspirations. <coughs> By no means am I implying that it is wrong to have ambitions. But when this ambition becomes so intense that it consumes the spirit, then we have become one-dimensional automatons, programmed only for self-gratification. We have lost something very important, the little child in us that once was so carefree and provided so much happiness. Happiness caused merely by the exhilaration of being alive. We have lost the childlike qualities which once elevated us above the pragmatic concerns of the world. Many are actually ashamed to do something just for the sake of doing it. Perhaps they are afraid if they let a moment pass without attempting to, to accomplish something, or if they fulfill a desire to simply relish a moment for the sheer pleasure of it, that they would somehow be wasting time. These people should realize that accomplishments mean nothing if you don't feel you deserve or have the right to experience joy for a reason other than achievement. What good in is achievement if you can't relax and enjoy what you've already accomplished? Why even strive for better? Perhaps the best way to retain the essence of youth is to consider a child's attributes. Children's fascination with the simplest aspects of the world, their mischievous nature, their sense of adventure, and even their candidness are characteristics which should not disappear as we grow older. A child is imaginative, creative, and often acts on impulse. Maybe some of you believe these characteristics to be a sign of immaturity in an adult. But does being an adult really mean that we must relinquish many of the qualities that made us unique and so lighthearted as children? Does being an adult mean that you must always look to and plan for the future, concerning yourself only with life's practical matters. If this were what constituted being an adult, then we would be living in an extremely dull, mundane world. I think one of the worst things that happens to people as they grow older is that they lose much of their faith and trust in others. They become more defensive and skeptical of new ideas. We should follow a child's example and place more confidence and trust in others. If we are constantly suspicious and on our guard, we could be de denying ourselves the pleasure derived from meaningful human relationships. My fellow graduates, let's not use, lose our youthful enthusiasm for life, for the world's smallest wonders. Don't let there ever be a necessity to, necessity to recapture your youth. Let your vigor and zest for life always have remained intact. In closing, I would like to thank all my teachers for putting up with me during the past four years. And most of all, I want to thank my parents for their devoted and unconditional love throughout the last 17 years. I love you. John Vance was a 1975 graduate of Coldwater High School. We believe he represented the highest standards of character and achievement 
to which all students should aspire. He was not just an athlete, nor an honor student, nor a student leader. He was all of these. On May 25th, 1982, John lost a year-long battle with cancer. In memory of John Vance, we, the faculty and staff of Coldwater High School, would like to honor a student who represents the high standards that John Vance exemplified. Today, we present the John Vance Award to William Mills. Would you come up here, Bill? Will the members of the 1986 class of Coldwater High School please rise? <laughs> On behalf of the faculty and administration at the high school, I present the class of 1986 to the Board of Education and in so doing certify that each member has met the requirements for a diploma and is entitled to all of the rights and privileges attaining thereto. Congratulations, seniors, and also to your families and friends who supported you to get you to this place. This is without a doubt the most pleasant job assignment I've had as president of the Board of Education. By the authority of the state of Michigan, vested in the Board of Education, and by them delegated to me as president, I hereby confer upon you the diploma of Coldwater High School. Please be seated. Will the graduates please come to the platform to receive their diploma? Madam President, Channel 8 WOTV in Grand Rapids runs a series of promotional spots about the best of the class of 86, and we start with the best of Coldwater's class of 86. The co-valedictorian, Jennifer Sarah Semelroth. <laughs> the second co-valedictorian, Christine Ann Wu. <laughs> the salutatorian of the class of 86, Joanne Louise Borden. Dozing. Thomas John Shire. Michael Allen Neely. Jenny Leah Balzo. Lois Ann Wilson. Joanne Peter. Karen Sue Herman. Brenda Sue Holbrook. Lori Lynn Hans. Miller. Sherry Lee Staley. Amy Joe Thomas. Hands, 
Philip Edward Miller III. Fatima L. Shibli, Federal Republic of Germany. Nina Westerman. Antich Anschke. Antich Kule. Ken James Hustis. William Dorrance Hawley. <laughs> Kelly Christopher Hopkins. <laughs> David Lee Stevens. <laughs> Dale Ewell Williams. George Michael Haas. Todd Lewis Taylor. Russell Drake Sheets. James Robert Hoyt. Claire. Kevin Lynn Cronkite. Jeffrey Eugene Bourne. Henry Breck Burke. Theodore Gates. Alan Mark Fleming. James Arthur Graholski. Tori Daniel Butters. Nicholas John Loomis. <coughs> John Joseph Borer. <laughs> Member of the greatest basketball team in Coldwater history. <laughs> Kevin Wayne Johns. <laughs> Scott David Winter. Richard Thomas Strong, also one of those guys who got famous Lane W. Van Stone. Marnie Joe Safransky. Jill Christine Taylor. basketball team, Brian Martin. Yeah. Kenneth Edward Humphrey. <laughs> Dawn Marine Marie, excuse me, Ward. Luann <laughs> Leanne Kelly Tackett. Lisa Marie Knapp. Tammy <laughs> Jo Lowndes. <laughs> Stacy Ann Roloff. 
Kathleen and Ferris. Sherry, Jean, Dice. I don't know. Let's get married. Tracy and Winger. Tracy, Lynn, Wilbur. Shell D. Ford. Timothy Richard Bettinger. We'll try that again. Timothy Richard Bettinger. Somewhat wind blown, but he made it. Karen Ann Kennedy. Kimberly Sue Philbrick. Amy Beth Cranham. Amy Lynn Carpenter. Did you hear that? Anne Michelle Holcomb. Patricia Ann Ross. <laughs> Rebecca Sue Hitchcock. <laughs> Mary Ann Love. <laughs> Lisa Marie Worley. Lisa Maureen Thompson. Susan Ann Fidel. Carol Louise Geisinger. Amanda Leah Zavonic. President of the class of 1986, Linda Michelle Buttery. Heidi <laughs> Ann Scott. Shelley Sue Nicely. <laughs> David Lee Smith. <laughs> Harold Emanuel Brode. Andrew Robert Ackmoody. Stephen J. Littley. David Brian Wendorf. Justin Michael Downs. Clifford Robert Whitgrove. Mark Jonathan Scherfick. Brock Harrison Donnelly. Lisa Ann Snyder. Right, Lisa! Julie Ann Miller. Julie Marie Coger. <laughs> Stephanie Jane Ford. Paula Louise 
Copeland. Chris and Birch. Amy Jo Carnahan. Donald David Dasher. Catherine Ann Hollingsworth. Denise Lynn Cole. Christopher Anthony Ward. Glenn Allen Taylor. Scott William Logan. Chad Edward Muckle. Daniel Maxick. <laughs> Kelly Ann Davenport. <laughs> Michael Wayne Sherfield. <laughs> Michael Lee McDonald. <laughs> Kyle. James Shoup. <laughs> Jeffrey Neil Adams. <laughs> Lara Jean Scheidler. <laughs> Cynthia. <laughs> Scott Erland Gleason. <laughs> Carla Lynette Kenyon. <laughs> Rebecca Marie Sherbine. Stephen Anton Dutcher. John William Robinson. Andrea K. Hudson. Lori Ann James. Renee Pierce. <laughs> Ellen Sue Marie Johnson. Michelle Lynn Vaughn. Linda Allen Fillmore. Jane Peterson. Cindy Sue Briggs. Sabrina Lynn Davies. My fifth hour will be lots more boring without those two. Sharon K. Burke. Rebecca K. Raymond. Jamie Laverne Greenley. Tracy Lynn Krasminski. 
Thomas Eugene Kleckner. Art Lamar Heller. Sharon Kathleen Liebenthal. Cindy Marie Lee. Lisa Marie Gawenda. Monica Ann Nettleman. Mary Grace Miller. Mary Sue Kelly. Marvin Dean Batterson. Dean Thomas Lutjens. Todd Michael Hart. David Lee Havey. Chris K. Rasmussen, Jr. Scott Jeffrey Shaftmaster. Scott David Mercer. Don Marie Converse. Tina May Payne. Tina Marie Magway. Jamie Lee Stempion. Lisa Ann Beggarly. Kenneth Bradford Wallace. Brian James Stempion. Corey Lee Greenwald. Michael Raymond Gleason. Anthony Martin Scott. Dean Alan Tobolsky. Alan David Dolson.
Marie Horn. Elizabeth Michelle O'Neill. Angela Marie Nuri. Wilbur Michael Frazier. Robert Leslie Northern. Christina K. Miller. Michelle Ann Hilton. Tracy B. Billman. Melinda Gail West. Melinda K. Melissa, pardon me, Melissa K. Marshall. Cheryl Lynn Hutchins. Kelly Ann Snyder. Gaitha Marie Bender. Melinda Lynn Ford. Melissa Ann Dempsey. Terry Ray Heath. J. C. Irvine. John Raymond Kellogg. John Robert Muskellick. Joseph Francis Cascarelli. Brian J. Zimmerman. <laughs> William Martin <coughs> Mills. John Paul Fresca. Oh. Kristen Jean Bushhouse. Christina Diane Langley. James Edward Mahoney. Scott Lee Seiler. Todd Lee Greshaw. Stephen Ernest Shenfield. Robert Lee Springstead. Jeffrey Scott Kolak.
William Eugene Morris. <coughs> Joseph Tackett. Nicholas Lee Gibson. <coughs> Terence Arthur Shady. <coughs> Jeffrey Lynn Spencer. Gary Lee Hunneman. Bruce Martin. <laughs> Michael Mason. Mark Allen Baroni. David Wendell McLean. Members of the class, very proud of you. I'm sorry I could not follow through on my promise to you. It's we are at 54. Oh. Members of the class of 1986, I welcome you as alumni of Coldwater High School. Would you please rise and be presented to this audience? your children out of the wilderness. Save us from returning to the wilderness of apathy, indifference, and self-absorption. Remind us that today is a commencement, not a conclusion. Make us honest money changers that we may give full value for that which we have received. Give us the wisdom and maturity to know that in an unfair world, the measure we give may not be the measure we get, but that charity covers a multitude of sins and may the God of peace go with us. Amen.